Hi, welcome to Tumamina Teaching. This is your first grade 8 lesson in mathematics for term 2. My name is Chris Jacobs and today we're going to be covering the basics of algebra. This is my contribution to Tumamina Teaching. Today we'll be discussing three things. One, what are variables? Two, what are terms? And three, what are algebraic expressions? Now algebra is a section that everybody feels quite uncomfortable with. However, people have been doing this for quite some time without even knowing. Let's show you an example. In this example, we can see that red chocolate plus red chocolate is equal to 20. So what do we do? How can we use algebra for this? Well, instead of saying red chocolate, let's replace it with the letter X. And so we see that X plus X is equal to 20. So just like you'd have red chocolate plus red chocolate equal to two red chocolates, in this example, we can see that x plus x is now equal to 2x. Now, if 2x is equal to 20, it must mean then that x is equal to 10. So now we can put that in the second line. So in the second line, we have yellow chocolate plus red chocolate equal to 12. But we already know that the red chocolate is equal to 10. So we can replace it over there. Now, instead of talking about yellow chocolate plus 10 equal to 12, we can replace the yellow chocolate with another variable. And so we replace it with a variable y. So y plus 10 is equal to 12. Hmm. y must then be equal to 2. So we can take both of these values and plug it into the third line. And so we find that yellow chocolate times yellow chocolate plus red chocolate is equal to some number. So let's take a look and see what it would be. We have 2 multiplied by 2 plus 10, which is equal to 14. Hey, hey, let's take a look at another example. In this example, in the first line, we can see that we have black shoe plus black shoe plus black shoe equal to 18. However, we don't quite like using the word black shoe. So let's replace it with a variable. And again, we're going to use x. So we know x plus x plus x is equal to 3x. So 3x is equal to 18, which means then that x must be equal to 6. Now that we know x is equal to 6, we can put it into the second line and we can see that this pink shoe minus 6 is equal to 7. Let's replace it with a variable. And so we replace it with the variable y. y minus 6 is equal to 7, which means y must equal to 13. Now in the last line, we have two pink shoes plus four black shoes equal to some value. What could that value be? Well, first thing we're going to do, we're going to replace the pink and the black shoes with variables. So the two pink shoes become two y and the four black shoes become four times x. We can now replace the y with 13 and the x with six. And so two times 13 equal to 26 and four times six gives us 24 to give us an answer of 50. We're getting there. Let's take a look at a third example. In this third example, we have red ball multiplied by red ball to give us 64. But we don't like using the word red ball. So instead, let us replace the red ball with a variable. And in this case, we replace it with a variable m. So now we have m multiplied by m equal to 64. Unlike those other examples, we're not adding the variables, but rather we are multiplying them. So m multiplied by m will not give us 2m, but rather m squared. So m squared is equal to 64. What would m be equal to? What number multiplied by itself gives us 64? That's correct. It's 8. So m is equal to 8. And what we can now do is in the second line, we can replace the red ball now with 8. So we have 8 divided by the blue ball is equal to 2. Hmm, we need the value of the blue ball. So what can we do? Let's replace it with a variable. So let's replace it with a different one because it's a different color. So 8 divided by a variable gives us 2. 8 divided by what number must give us 2? That's correct, 4. So in this case, n is equal to 4. So now we have three red balls plus two blue ones equal to a certain number. So what do we do? First, we replace them with a variable. So we say three 
times m plus 2 times n. But we said that m was equal to 8 and that n was equal to 4. So we have 3 multiplied by 8 plus 2 multiplied by 4. So we have 24 plus 8 to give us 32. And that is how we solve these little sums using algebra. So what are variables? Variables are letters or symbols that represent a value that can change. Just like we had in the earlier ones, where we replaced something with x and another thing with y, the variables represent those values for that specific example. They can be any numbers such as 5, 7, 11, or any value that you can possibly have. And we can use any letter to use as a variable. If you have more than one variable, each variable will need a different symbol. So for example, we could work with x, with y, a, b, or even later on in mathematics, we would work with theta. And each of these variables represent a different value. Let's take a look at two of these, 2x and the other is 2x squared. So even though these look the same, they're not quite the same. Let's check it out. If we said x was equal to 7, what would we get? Well, if we look on the left hand side of the equation, we'd have 2 multiplied by 7. However, on the right hand side, you'd have 2 multiplied by 7 squared. Why? Because the x was squared. So on the left hand side, we have 14. And on the right hand side, we'd have 2 multiplied by 7 squared, which is 49. So 2 multiplied by 49 gives us 98, whereas the other side is just 14. And so this gives us a clear indication that 2x and 2x squared are not the same. They are different. Now, what happens if we don't just speak about a variable, but if we put a number with a variable, like we had now, 2x squared? We no longer just speak about a variable, but we speak about a term. So what are terms? Terms consist of three components. One, it consists of a coefficient, the number in front of the variable. Two, terms have a letter associated with it, which is called a variable. And finally, three, the variable could have a power or an index or an exponent on top of it. If a term does not contain a variable, but is just a number, we call that a constant. So let's break down terms even further. We're going to work with 4x cubed again. So if we look at the x cubed, what does it mean? The x cubed means that we have x multiplied by x multiplied by x, which is why we have x to the power of 3. So what does the 4 mean? The 4 means that we have x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed. So essentially, what 4x cubed is, it means that it's 4 multiplied by x cubed. We notice that if we have x to the power of 5, there's no number in front of it. But no, there is a number. It's just invisible. What it means is that there's a 1. Similarly, if we just have the variable a, it doesn't mean that there's no power on it. It means that the exponent is 1. We come now to the third part of our lesson, algebraic expressions. Now, what are algebraic expressions? Algebraic expressions are a collection of constants and or variables, or in other words, terms. Now, in an algebraic expression, we could have one term, two terms, three terms, four terms, or many terms that we can find over this expression. When an expression has one term, we call it a monomial. And we can see this in the example of negative 2x, just one term. If an expression has two terms, we call it a binomial. Bi for two, such as bicycle. In this example, we have negative 2x plus 3y. If an expression has three terms, we call it a trinomial for three. So we can have it as negative 2x plus 3y plus 7. And we notice there that 7, even though it doesn't have a variable, it is still a term. We call that a constant. If an expression has four or more terms, we say that it is a polynomial. Poly meaning many. So if we look at negative 2x plus 3y plus 7 minus 4x cubed, we notice that there are four terms there, and so that is considered a polynomial. A very important rule about algebraic expressions is that pluses and minuses separate terms, whereas multiplications, divisions, and brackets group terms together. Let's do an example or a few examples and see 
how this happens. Let's take negative 4x cubed plus 5y minus 7. And first we ask ourselves the question, how many terms are in the expression? Well, we notice that there's a negative, there's a positive, and there's a negative. So it means that there must be three terms in the expression. The next question, what is the value of the constant term? A constant term? It's a term that doesn't have a variable. So in this case, our constant term is negative 7. It is not just 7, it is negative 7 because we have to include the sign with the number. What is the coefficient of the x cubed term? We know that there's the x cubed term and we know that the coefficient is negative 4. Next question, what is the index of y? Index, index, the power. What is the power of y? Well, there's no number above it, which means that the number has to be 1. Finally, what is the name given to this expression? Well, we know that there are three terms, which makes this a trinomial. Three terms, trinomial. Let's do another example. Here we have 2x to the power 4 plus 5x cubed, all in brackets, plus 7x squared minus x minus 12. Whew, that seems like a lot, but let's take it step by step. How many terms are in the expression? Well, it looks like there's five, but we realize that in this one, there's brackets, and we know that brackets group terms together. So we count that 2x to the power of 4 and that 5x to the power of 3 because they're in brackets, we count it as one term. So that's one term plus that 7x squared minus that x minus the 12, which is a constant. We know that there are four terms in this expression. What is the value of the constant term? Constant term? Constant term is a number with no variable. So in this case, the value of our constant term is negative 12. What is the coefficient of the x cubed term? We know that the x cubed is inside the brackets, but even though it's inside the brackets, it still has a coefficient. What is a coefficient again? It is the number that is in front of the variable. So if we look at that x cubed term, the number in front of the variable is 5. Next question. What is the coefficient of the x term? Well, which one do we have to look at? Even though there are four terms containing x, there's only one of the terms that has an x to the power of 1. So we look at that one and we look for the coefficient. And we realize that the coefficient is the number in front of it. But there's no number in front of it. Which means that the number must be 1. But it's not just 1, it is negative 1. Finally, what is the name given to this type of expression? We know that there are four terms in this one, which makes this a polynomial. Let's take a look at a last example. So, in this example, we have 5x minus 4x cubed plus 9 minus x squared. Hmm, this one looks a bit different to the others because this one is slightly jumbled up. What do I mean? If you look at the exponents on the x, you will notice that it looks just a bit out of order. We first have x, then x cubed, then no x, and then x squared. So what we're first going to do is we're going to rewrite this expression in the descending order of x. So descending order means to go from the biggest to the smallest. So we're going to start off with the x with the biggest exponent and then to the x with the smallest exponent. So we rewrite this as negative 4x cubed minus x squared plus 5x plus 9. And now we are ready to answer any of the questions. First question, what is the value of the constant term? Remember, that's a number without a variable. In this case, it's positive 9. Next question, what is the coefficient of the x squared term? Well, the x squared has no number in front of it, which means that it's 1. But there's a negative sign to it, which means that the coefficient is negative 1. What is the coefficient of the x cubed term? The x cubed, the number in front of it is 4. But the sign with it is a negative, which makes the coefficient negative 4. What is the name given to this type of expression? Well, let's count the number of terms. 1, 2, 3, 4 signs that separate them. And there's no multiplication or division signs in between them. 
So there are four terms. Thus making it a polynomial. So let's recap on what we just learned. A, B, X, Y, theta, all of these things are variables which work as placeholders for any value. Each different variable represents a different value. Terms are separated by a plus or a minus, but are grouped together by a multiplication, division, or brackets. Some simple rules apply, such as a plus a gives us 2a, whereas a multiplied by a gives us a squared. If we have two different variables and we multiply them by each other, let's say m and n, m multiplied by n will be mn. However, because there are two different variables, you cannot add them together. So m plus n will remain m plus n. Finally, we realize that brackets, multiplication and division signs, group the terms together. And so they would reduce the number of terms and thus giving it a different name. Monomial 1, binomial 2, trinomial 3, polynomial 4 or more. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. All the best.